Thank you for joining us for Five on Your Side at 10. I'm Morgan Young. We start with breaking news tonight. A sad night for Cardinals Nation. Cardinals Hall of Famer Bob Gibson has died tonight. We're taking a look at the life of this baseball great. Things are all together different today than they were back in 1959. In April 2019, a street in the Grove neighborhood became Bob Gibson Way. It's, it's been great to be able to be here, to be alive long enough to see the changes. But what was the way Bob Gibson took to achieving greatness? In three words, power, intensity, and according to most, anger. I always said, when Gibson pitches, he's mad. And the, uh, the uh, batters know that. And I really don't think that's the way I was, except when I pitched, I, I didn't really care what people thought about me. To know what drove Bob Gibson to the Hall of Fame, you have to know his backstory. In his own words, he grew up fatherless, poor, and black. Thanks to his older brother, Josh, a sickly child grew into a multi-sport athlete. He looked into attending Indiana University, but was told they'd fulfill their quota of black athletes. One. He played basketball at Creighton, averaging 20 points for his career, and spent a season with the Harlem Globetrotters. He left because he didn't like the clowning on the court. His development was slowed in part by wildness and partly by a manager, Sally Hemus, who Gibson thought was a racist. He finally hit his stride. From the St. Louis Cardinals, Bob Gibson, one of the real heart throwers in the National League. At 26, he was an all-star. At 28, a miraculous throw. Very, very close. He's out. He was a World Series MVP, pitching on fumes in Game 7 and prompting manager Johnny Keane to say, I owed it to his heart. Now, he wasn't about to slow down. At 29, he won 20 games for the first of five times. At 31, he came back from a broken leg to pitch the pennant clincher and win three World Series games. At 32, he was the face of the most dominant season for pitchers in the live ball era. NBC Sports, a 2-2 pitch. Looking out on a hit curveball. 17 strikeouts in game one of the 68 World Series. He got him! Struck him out! And I think my curveball was more of a surprise to him than anything else, so uh, I think that's where the scouting report tells. I don't think they uh, said too much about my curveball. His 1.12 ERA and 13 shutouts that season were primary reasons the mound was lowered to give hitters a better chance. At 33, 20 more wins and the fifth of nine consecutive Gold Glove Awards. Gibby, who many said was in the twilight of his career, was the architect of another spectacular season. At 34, 23 wins and his second Cy Young Award. He looks in and gets the Cy. At 35, he pitched the no hitter he never thought he'd throw. Here's the pitch and it's a strike called the no hitter for Gibson. Did I mention he also hit 24 career home runs? He was an intimidator on the mound. He once said, half the plate is mine. Your job as the hitter is to figure out which half. It's coming, the swing and miss, he struck him out. At 38, he became only the second pitcher to have 3,000 strikeouts. At 39, bad knees ended his glorious career. He said goodbye before a capacity crowded Bush Stadium on his way to the Hall of Fame in 1981. Bob Gibson. Goodbye, but not really. He lived in Omaha, but came back often, wearing his red jacket. His statue lives outside Bush Stadium, and he treasured his time as a Cardinal. While you're having the career, you're not aware of it. And then one day you're sitting down and you're reading things in a book, or somebody is talking with you about something that you accomplished, and which, now that is amazing, some of the things that I did. I was just proud of what I did. Gibson had battled pancreatic cancer, cancer for a little over a year, and his passing comes less than a month after his former teammate and fellow Hall of Famer Lou Brock, who also passed away.